You're listening to Brandon Boost. Brandon Boost. So welcome to episode 11, Best Strategies for Business Owners and Otherworldly Possibilities. I'm not sure otherworldly, is that like if we get confused we can go out to aliens and, oh is that, is that the alien vibe? There's a question. I know there's an alien question. <laughs> <laughs> it's just otherworldly possibilities. So introducing today Antonio Mankulu, who I've known for quite a long time, always been involved in lots of different e-commerce and branding type things. Yep. But if you want to give a little introduction to the, the world. Yes, thank you, Ben, for having me. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously my name is Antonio. I'm a co-founder of Best Group at the moment. Uh, we're a collective of e-commerce consultants who specialize in various areas of e-commerce, like process optimization, payments, um, um, supply chain, supply chain management, supply demand, supply demand planning, e-commerce growth, name it. So we have consultants who are in different areas, uh, self-finance and so forth. Um, myself, obviously, I've been in business a number of years. Um, had an e-commerce store myself previously. Uh, um, also, at the same time, I run an e-commerce, an um, a, a Amazon brand um, in, in the past. So quite a number of experience in e-commerce, branding, marketing, B2B and so forth. So yeah, so I'm happy to be here to share some of the, some, some of the knowledge I have on this area. Yeah. So you've switched sort of sides going from selling direct to selling to businesses instead? Yes, exactly. Um, B2B for me is um, one of the great areas to be in because, as I said, it's it's repetitive business. Um, I, I, I prefer it that way. Um, I still enjoy direct-to-consumer um, activities like brand building, so maybe in the, new f in the future I might go back to it. Um, I mean, work with the number of clients who are selling direct to consumers. But for now, um, yeah, for now, like myself, I sell to businesses, but we work with a number of businesses who obviously sell directly to consumers and help them grow. And how did you find selling on Amazon and things like that? Um, when I heard about the new rule now, I was pretty much thinking like it's uh, crazy, to be honest, because me, myself, understand, I always used to find it taking the money was always long enough because as a small as a small business when you sell on Amazon it's great because you get footfall um, so it helps you quickly to um, generate sales if you have the right product plus Amazon the the, um, the Amazon um, pay-per-click um, it's very effective it's one of the to be honest at the moment is still very cheap um, it's cost effective so the return of investment the return on that spend there is really great um, so on that note it's really fantastic for small businesses to start on Amazon. However, you run out of stock, you run out of stock also quickly. And if they're holding your money inside um, inside the stock and your suppliers are not necessarily in the UK, um, then it makes it may make it make it very difficult for you to grow as a business. Um, a lot of businesses we already heard is they basically um, worried about going because a lot of businesses have the majority turnover on Amazon. So if, if Amazon is now holding the, the money longer onto their accounts, it's, 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 um, it's going to be very, very difficult for these businesses to operate. From my own experience, I know that sometimes we run out of stock and we have to increase the price of our, double the, the, um, the price of our products to kind of slow down the sales yeah. because we don't want to run out of stock either because it doesn't affect your algorithm positively. But if you're waiting on money, and you can't buy no new stock, and then by the time the money comes, till your supplier ship the stock and get here, so it all delays everything. So you're losing a lot of selling days, um, which is obviously not ideal for any business. So yeah, now selling on Amazon, I found it great um, in terms of generating quickly sales and getting out there and getting your product quickly out there. But obviously, the keeping the money, it's 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 mm. very very. Uh, and it's probably not the best time for them to start. I'm sure no. they've got reasons for it, but it's in. You want to get all your orders in it, summer, September time, so you can then do a big stock order in time for Christmas, mm -hmm. and then buying yeah. their order money, and exactly you're a bit stuck. Exactly. I mean, I understand that. Obviously, they hold the money for a bit because obviously they have reasons, like you know, so if it any health concern your account or the policy violations, things like that. So they need to hold on some amount as they used to. However. 
the extended period of time. That's um, they might have the reason for it, but it's not going to be helpful for the business. I think um, one of the things that kicked off so much about it this time was that it was affecting sellers who were using FBA a lot, mm. and obviously to a point they're saying, "Well, you've delivered the product, you're handling the customer service. Most of the pressure is on Amazon, yet you're still holding my money." I can understand it when you're using, you know, you're delivering yourself because they've got to trust that you're going to deliver. Um, but if there's not really an issue with the products, why do they need to hold yeah. such massive amounts? Yeah. And I wonder if they'll use, this is just thinking, I wonder if they're using their finance offerings to smooth it out somewhat. So maybe they could hold your money from one part and then offer you money at an interest rate. It, it, it could be, it could be. Um, the def there's definitely a, a, a business up strategy behind it, um, why they would do it. They wouldn't just come up with it. Um, a lot of businesses want to have money um, in their account, cash. Nowadays, I mean, if you even think about like Starbucks, um, they like this new point systems where you buy, you have, you put your money into a card, but then you're using it. So they're actually holding your money mm. like their bank. Um, it, it's for a lot of these public trading companies having a lot of money in their bank account reflects good on the share prices, obviously their leverage and everything else that they're trying to do. So I think there's, there's obviously uh, other bigger reasons behind it, um, why they want to keep keep cash in, 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 in their bank accounts. But however, from, for, from a seller's point, point of view, it's, 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 it's definitely going to be more, more difficult on the sellers to tell us to definitely start looking at, at alternatives. I mean, I'm not a big believer in people just keeping keeping all your eggs in one basket anyway. Yeah. Um, for me, I always saw Amazon as great for starting for starting out, like to get sales in for sales, direct sales, but it never been great for brand building. So I would always recommend any business to kind of like have uh, their own website anyway, um, ideally custom build or with Shopify, um, which then they have a different payment merchant um, because Amazon takes a lot in terms yeah. of the fees. If you look at the amount Amazon takes, yes, it's great because you're generating enough sa great, great sales, but it should be a, a short-term strategy, not a long-term one. I would never want to rely on a third party to control the majority of my business, mm. you know, uh, because as I said, they can change the rules at any time and there's less you can do about it. So um, so I, I always recommend you have like your own websites, you have a third party, maybe fulfillment partner, who ideally, um, who fulfills your orders because on that note, what you can actually do is on advise the, the fulfillment partner how to package it, um, what to put in there, specific what you want to do is like each customer who buys, try to direct them, put an offer in there to direct them next time to buy directly from your own website exactly. so that you capture the data, you capture, so they start buying directly from your own website. It takes, takes your, your fee lowers. I, I, I recommend using Amazon like Groupon you know, in any business, you know, it's to collect data, get the customers who are going in to buy from you, but then use that to move them over to your platform. Um, you know, once they're on your platform, they're on your database, you hold their data, you can communicate to them directly, you can buy from them directly. On your own website, you can have much, much lower pay fees. Your fulfillment partner can obviously offer you um, much better rates or even better, much better service. And you know, and you have more flexibility if there's anything wrong, how you can move it. You can integrate to other third party uh, partners. Like right now, a big one in UK I would recommend to definitely look into is the range. Okay. The range is doing pretty well. Doing, they're doing pretty. Um, um, they're going pretty active, and they at the moment you can see that it's quick and easy to sign up with them as well. They're really encouraging. Um, so the range is definitely one for like for brand. I mean, you can use Etsy and them. They're smaller ones, but but if you really wanna establish a brand, you have a great product. Like I don't know, like let's say like a beauty brand, your beauty brand, and you have like a lotion or whatever and you want it to be positioned, you want your product positioning to also fit your brand, then I would want to probably use something more established like the range, something which has a brand which can also complement yours and make it just look a little bit more, you know, more professional. Yeah. So yeah, so and then you can link all these platforms to your, to your fulfillment partner. Yeah. And then, you know, Amazon, your range and everything else, so have it all centralized. And, and yeah, and then try to transfer them your clients or the data, your clients who are coming from all the different marketplaces, transfer them over to you, to yourself, so that in the future, majority of, the, of your sales should be coming through your website. 
No, it's definitely um, you know, a lot of valid points mm -hmm. there. Um, I think, like you mentioned briefly with Etsy, where they've got basically the same rules as Amazon now in terms of uh, holding monies, uh, if not a higher amount. So mm. that can be um, just as tricky. Mm. I think um, many brands and business owners, when they start to look at their figures, they don't look at the whole picture, especially mm. with Amazon. You know, like you say, you've got maybe ads running, you've got all the different types of fees. Um, and when they look at what profit they're actually making it can be a lot less than they think. Mm -hmm. uh, as you say, with Amazon, you don't own the customer in any way. Mm -hmm. um, and there's obviously some rules around not advertising directly to the client, you know, the, the end customer with like leaflets and things, um, though a lot of people still do it. But if you can obviously get them onto your website, then you control them forever. You can put them in email marketing flows and mm -hmm. try and get them to come back and upsell them, cross-sell them, mm -hmm. million and one things. Mm -hmm. With Amazon, you've no idea if they're going to come back, have you? No, exactly, exactly. This is, this is where it, 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 is, it, is, it is definitely. I never, as I said, no matter what platform you're using, so any third party which you don't control, this, they can always be an issue in the future. Should it be even for your marketing, if you're using TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, they're all amazing platform to use, but you always wanna have a strategy how you start funneling slowly to your own data, your own clients, to yourself, to yeah. a database you hold, to an email database you can go and communicate to them back to, um, because otherwise, as I said, these platforms from today to tomorrow, they can change the rules, and then and then you have to play by these new rules. You know, you ain't got no control over them, it's not, you don't own it, but what about if you obviously own your own platform, you own your own database, it's, always, it's going to make it always more better in the future for yourself. Yeah, you're in control of your own destiny, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely harder, in theory, to sort of sell on Shopify and things mm -hmm. like that. It's a slower burn, mm -hmm. but start today, and in 12 months' time, you've probably got a fairly strong brand, mm -hmm. you know, on Instagram or TikTok or wherever else. Mm -hmm. um, top it up with Amazon to get the potential customers in, get them used to your brand, and then quickly try and bring them over. And obviously fulfillment centers, whichever one you use, offer just as good a service and delivery option as Amazon do. Mm -hmm. Many of them will still use Amazon to deliver, mm -hmm. um, but you don't need all of that extra cost and things that goes with it. Yeah, because cost is one of the things which I think a lot of e-commerce owners don't really pay so much attention to. Um, because we understand, what I will say, a lot of e-commerce owners today, we know some e-commerce, we work with some e-commerce owners who are probably going from zero to a few million in two years, three years. So the, the entrepreneur is still the same entrepreneur he was pretty much a year ago, two years ago. You don't change that quickly. Uh, this is obviously where, why some companies decide to call consultants to come in and help. Um, but, and every time you're working with one of these e-commerce owners, just notice like, what we saw across the board is that the, not all of them understand always or pay attention to every penny. Mm. You know, um, something as simple as your payment gateway, for example. This, this first, for example, the first thing we always look at is like, okay, let's even look how much you're just paying on your fees or your transaction fees. We have saved companies upwards to fifty thousand pound a year on payment, payment processing alone. This is just a matter of looking at Excel and say, okay, you know what, by the time you started, they were okay. But like any, like like insurance, every year, you might wanna get a recruit on your mm -hmm. insurance because you've been doing it for a while, you know, you're less risky and all this kind of stuff. And then, and your trades, your numbers have been increased, so they might not necessarily be longer the right partner for you. Um, same with fulfillment, same with any other provider you might be working with, so, and, Understand in this fast-paced, moving world, and when you're an entrepreneur, you're dealing with everything else. You might not necessarily have the time to really look into EVs. Just your energy contracts could could, make, could save you thousands of pounds a, a, a year. You know, just by you reviewing it, actually looking. You know what? Actually, now there's somebody else in the market right now because I set it up quite quickly. I didn't have all my numbers right, but now I can go to anybody else and say like, okay, you know what, guys, can you do me a better rate? And you save a couple of thousand pounds a year. So. A lot of entrepreneurs, they don't pay attention to this, like, basic, uh, basic, well, I think, basic I think cost they just sometimes. get offered what they're offered, don't mm -hmm. they? So on Amazon, obviously, you don't have any choice. It's just Amazon. Mm -hmm. And on Shopify, probably 99% of people use Shopify payments mm -hmm. because it's the one that's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're never going to offer you lower rates unless you 
may be negotiated, but even then it's pretty rare that they'll mm -hmm. lower the prices unless you're offering, you know, much, much higher levels of um, sales so, and stuff. Yeah, no, definitely agree. Definitely agree. As I said, it's the, whoever is the easiest first one, but it's not, often not the most cost effective one, you know. The, the most cost effective one is usually the one they don't know, mm -hmm. you know. If, if the person's name is big, you know, if it's Stripe, everybody knows it, <laughs> you know, Shop, everybody knows it, most likely um, it's, it's not the best the best deal because yeah. obviously they had the money, they have to make the money to spend it on branding so, so that everybody I, else gets to know. I guess they also, because they basically cater to just about everyone, unless you're sort of in a high risk area, their prices are set for the average, aren't they? You know, mm -hmm. Whether you're a small company, big company, you sell paint, you sell clothes, like mm -hmm. theirs is their rate predominantly. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can definitely make some savings on that. Same on the courier side, just speaking to the couriers and asking them for a better price. Like you say, if you've gone from, you know, 50 orders a week to 200 or, or you you sell to only one city, you know, predominantly more than anything else, there's loads of ways. You can either go to a different courier and try and get a different price or just go back to the same courier. Um, again, they're not generally going to, preemptively offer you a lower price until you ask for it. Mm. And I think as business Can't, owners, everyone just threaten to leave. <laughs> but exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's always, it always gets better if you say, okay, actually I found somebody else. <laughs> and like, you know what, yeah. suddenly the offer gets a little bit better. So it's, it's I, always I think, gets better. I think you're definitely right that there's, there's money to be saved. I mean, with Amazon, obviously, unless you're using um, one of the services that kind of breaks down all the different Amazon bills, Half the time you don't even know oh, what okay. how the invoice even is made up. They make it so confusing. Um, so it does get very confusing. At least on Shopify, in theory, it's simpler mm -hmm. or, or a different you know, marketplace. you just got their hosting fee and then the payment fee. Um, but yeah, I would have thought that hardly anybody ever changes their payment gateway. Yeah, true, true. I mean, like, if, as I said, like, a lot, of, a lot of companies, a lot of business people sometimes, you, you get so hangover and the turnover, you know, it's like, Turn over a million, turn over 2.5, turn over 5. The question is, am I being profitable? You know, where's all my money really going to? How much money do I have left? And we often come to come late because the bigger you get, the more trickier it actually gets. So it's that we always advise to start implementing all these processes. As I said, this check in your approaches to check your fulfillment partner, your approaches to check your delivery partner, your approaches to check your pro, uh, payment provider, and everything else who's actually implement all those early. Um, because as I said, the bigger you get, you have so many loopholes where this money can just be flying out flying out, and you don't see it, mm -hmm. you know? And, 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 and then it becomes more costly even just to analyze, the more time consuming, just analyze and really go down to the bottom of things, yeah. So yeah, it's true. We really, 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 um, it's something definitely recommend everybody. Well, it's just money that you're giving away for no reason, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Every single order, you're giving a little bit away to the courier, a little bit too much to the payment gateway. Maybe you're paying a little bit too much for the packaging, whatever it might be. If you can mm -hmm. shave off 10% off every little cost, start now and by the end of the year, yeah. you'll have an extra, you know, 30, 40% less cost. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you would recommend them going to say Shopify? Is that is that what you would recommend, or is there other uh, I mean, e-commerce platforms? There's e other e-commerce platform. Um, I definitely I, I, Shopify is great because it's easy. Um, it's easy to set up, but there's also big commerce, which is also I find big commerce slightly easier actually to set up than Shopify for myself. Um, but Shopify, obviously, they have a lot of integrated things as well already, so they're, they're, they're easy, easy ones. When it comes to platform, as I said, the bigger you get, the more I recommend um, you to more if you have your own e-commerce platform um, because you just control it. Anything you can control yourself, it's better. But obviously, think about cost of building one because as you need a content management system, which is actually the most expensive part. Um, and with Shopify, obviously, all it comes, it's, there's no errors, it's been, it's been like, you know, operating for a long time, so you have all that experience behind it. Um, yeah, so, so in, on, on that note, yeah, but for, if I see, like, if I want to move quickly, I definitely probably look at BigCommerce or Shopify um, to kind of like, you know, um, use any of them too, just to move quickly. Um, obviously, you have less flexibility in, in certain areas, but, but you get to move quickly and kind of establish a shop get it out there and then you start as I said you start focus on on a data acquiring strategy because you really want to own your customer you really want to own your data you don't want any of the platforms to own your majority of the data of your customers um, 
you want them to funnel customers to you, new customers to you, yeah. but ideally you want repeat business to come to you directly yourself. So this is this is what we always recommend. So it's 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 definitely um, something we say like look in building that strategy, implementing it early, um, so that you know you can try and test this. See if it works, if it works great, and then scale that way. Comparing how Q four mm -hmm. has gone over the last few years, yeah. it's evolved a lot. It's been a pretty turbulent time. We mm -hmm. had twenty twenty. Obviously, everyone was locked down. E commerce went mental. Mm -hmm. 2021, I think was still pretty good. 2022 looked like it dropped a bit, certainly mm -hmm. across the industry overall. You any idea how people? Do you think people will do this year with everything that's gone on? Um, obviously, this year we have to. Every year, there's always a problem. Obviously, uh, this year um, we're still obviously suffering the impact of inflation, which which is still. We're still going to feel it for a little bit. Our economy is not really the best at the moment. Here, I'm speaking about here in the UK. Um, so you have obviously, have, like, you know, with the Brexit effect, we start feeling a little bit more. So so there's, there's a lot of kind of like um, aftermath effects, I would say, from, mm -hmm. from things we've been, from, from things which happened over the last couple of years. Um, so I believe that sales will not be the same as obviously pandemic level. Where everybody was at home, um, believe everybody probably had a little bit more for disposable income as well because you weren't eating out restaurants, you were going anywhere, so you're probably spending more, uh, you are probably having more money in your bank account. Uh, but however, as the world is pretty much going back to the normal phase, I believe it's def probably definitely going to be higher than last year, Q Q um, yeah Q four last year. Um, because I think as I said, we're going a little bit back into uh, normality. I think it's also the the People are less concerned as they were probably, you know, uh, uh, last year, um, because obviously the, the future was a little bit more uncertain. But about now, we have a more of a positive outlook. Um, I think we're getting used to certain <laughs> cost levels now. You know, um, I don't think petrol is gonna go down anymore. So that's that's our that's our. I mean, every time it goes up, it never goes down. They might pay that couple of pence, but then that's the level now. I think we're getting used to that. Um, and, and businesses are adjusting to this and everybody's in the lifestyle. So I believe the, the sales are going to be higher. Um, however, uh, it's not going to be the same as, as the pandemic level. Um, and I doubt it. I think that for, for that, we still we had too many things which has happened over the last few years, which are still going to impact people's ability to spend. Um, so, yeah. I think from what I've seen from us as a fulfillment centre is that the brands that really focus on their niche and their you know, their customer following do particularly well because people still want to support that brand. Um, when you've got sort of generic products um, that you can kind of buy from anywhere, mm -hmm. that's when it struggles, I think, because people are like, well, why would I buy off you rather than anybody else? You're going to spend more advertising to try and win them over, whereas if you've just got your good brand and you've got a new product or it comes back into stock, um, that works pretty well. And also just making sure that if you're not selling internationally that you are because mm. we might be struggling but other countries are really not or mm. they've come out of it a lot quicker so certainly like the US parts of Europe um, even into like the Middle East and things you know those markets are actually pretty easy to get into these days as long as you you know account for the cost and things the market is just so much bigger than here. True um, Germany is definitely one of the key e-commerce markets which are um, which are um growing uh, and pushing for at the moment so we definitely recommend looking at the German market um, because it is obviously close proximity wise um, as I said uh, most of them and partners over here can easily ship to Germany um, so quite quickly as well and the process of handling everything should be quite good and we understand that obviously the Brexit it may have complicated slightly the paperwork but however it might be the, the benefits of, of, of getting access to the market and the growth of the market. Um, currently, you know, um, that it might actually um, um, prove, to be, prove to be very useful and beneficial. Yeah, I mean, just on numbers alone, you know, if you add the US market and the main Western countries in Europe, you know, you're increasing your market size by mm -hmm. like 10 times. So percentage-wise, you've got a good chance. Brexit has obviously made it harder mm -hmm. and more costly, but if you work out what the costs are, mm. then just add it into your price. Um, people are 
seemingly okay with paying for it. If they don't buy it, that's fine. No, no loss. You wouldn't have had them anyway if you weren't trying to target them. But there's plenty that will, and certainly in the States, they seem to be pretty willing to pay whatever fees are required. Um, so that certainly seems like a good option, and their, their mm. economy in particular certainly come back a lot quicker. Do, do you have any specific sort of e-commerce tips for this year or just the brands in total either cutting their costs or trying to increase some sales? Um, one thing we want to say for brands will maybe pay attention to the trends which are happening at the moment as a company. So obviously uh, in e-commerce, we went from uh, kind of like most brands are going like now from uh, kind of like an omni-channel to a kind of like a unified commerce which is a bit more of a customer centric, as I said, a niche, more customer centric strategy where you're really f looking into the data. Um, so that, that would definitely be, would be like one of my advices to e commerce businesses right now to kind of really pay attention to the trends that are happening. Even the marketing trends, uh, TikTok is amazing right now. It's, it's, it's people underestimate the, the, the reach. Even if you're not great and you can be reaching 700 800 people on a daily basis these are 700 800 people who are seeing your brand on a daily basis don't underestimate the power that has over a course of a year over a course of two years so and and once you understand how simple tiktok actually is in terms of like to really play with the algorithm it will be a game changer to the business um data is the new oil been for a while um focus on data acquisition uh, when it comes to Q4, I always say Q4 for me as a business, as an e-commerce business was always the the time for us to really try to capture as much data as possible. Um, all the offers and discounts were there to replenish our stock, get basically everything out which would have otherwise, you know, um, just start costing us on inventory, uh, management inventory um, space. Um, try to get that once everything out on, on that sort of sense. Um, and then the sales, the discounts, like, you know, when you're talking about Black Friday, you're talking about everything else was coming, um, use that to really do campaigns where it allows you to capture the data of your clients for future sales. Because I say, don't give anything away to get anything if you're not getting anything back. The only reason I give somebody a discount is because I want to get something back. Um, otherwise, the, the, this is, you're losing money. So because you're going to have to spend that difference then in a market, different marketing campaign. Yeah. So if you fuse it all into one, where it's like, okay, I'm giving something away so that I can get I can get something back in return. Should it be like I want to clear off my old stock, or I want I want to kind of like um, get the customer's data, or whatever other choice you might have. It's it, it's definitely um, one of the things we would um, recommend for a business to kind of look into and, and make sure they implement correctly. Um, on that note, um, your supply chain management has to be key um, from your how you're going to fulfill the orders. Um, because having uh, more orders when you shoot off is great, but if it's not all fulfilled right, um, you then basically gonna get unsatisfied customers, customer complaints. I prefer to not have the customer at all than have a customer leaving a bad review because yeah. it costs me more customers. <laughs> so, so make sure that you can deliver the order. So plan your supply chain properly. Um, if you need to hire a demand planning consultant to help you with planning actually your demand, so kind of how much you're going to need, when you're going to need how much, um, and what month, like look at really your supply chain so that your, your suppliers are aware of what they need to do extra, your fulfillment partners know, or whoever's fulfilling for you is aware if you're doing it even yourself, your team has to be ready and trained uh, to make sure everything goes right in time because there's so much we can go wrong in such a short time period um, so if you plan now and put all these processes in place anything which has to be automated automated and free up people's space and time because obviously you never know what can happen and where you might want to use that human resource to adapt you know um, you can lose staff members in the last minute you know um, happens people move jobs yeah. and then how you're gonna cope with that have you got um, you know if it's during the, the business time period are you able? Are you able to still fulfill your demand? So, so all these areas, I would definitely advise companies to kind of really look into and pay attention. Yeah, it's interesting. So all the yeah preparation, as much as the oh, I'm going to do a fifty percent off sale or anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's thinking about what is the impact of doing a lot of those things, and like you say, not ending up with a load of unhappy customers. Mm -hmm. um, there was always the famous thing with Jim Shark in like 2015, I think mm -hmm. it was when they had. I think WooCommerce or, or Magento, maybe. Um, 
and they had loads of sales on their Black Friday, and then the whole website crashed, yeah. and they got tons and tons of bad feedback, and that could have been the end of Gymshark, but mm. uh, luckily the brand was strong enough to get through. The other thing on the couriers, um, who knows what will happen this year? Hopefully, Touchwood, no more strikes. Um, but last year, the other couriers, DPD, Every, and people like that in particular, really closed down what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and they may do a similar thing again this year. So you need to talk to them and say, this is what I predict I'm going to be sending, because they may just block you from sending once you get to a certain amount. It seems balmy, but that's what they did last year. So you might ship your 50 orders, your 200 orders, and then you'll go to ship the 201, and it will say, not allowed. Mm. Um, again, how are you going to explain that to your customer? Do you have a backup option if you're only with one courier? Um, you know, could you drop it to the post office? Could you get another account? And if you are going to get an account, be it with the courier or with the fulfillment centre, um, now until the end of September is kind of your deadline, really, mm-hmm. because they won't take new customers on a normal fulfillment centres because it's too stressful enough a time as it is. Mm-hmm. So they'll just, you know, call it a day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, again, it's all around preparation, making sure you've got everything ready so that you hopefully have a nice... Stress-free one. Yeah, well, and we had, in our podcast last time, um, we talked about um, SEO and PPC ads and things. Mm-hmm. Um, and the girls had some really great advice on just making sure you kind of start your campaigns early so mm-hmm. they get a bit of traction. Don't just try turning them on on Black Friday because Google will suddenly say, we're reviewing this or it's got no data on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess the same if you were using Amazon ads, things like that. Yeah. Consider warming the pixels a bit early yeah that's true um if pixels still run um and also just following on from that last podcast if anyone's still not updated their google analytics to google analytics 4 you're not tracking data anymore so it's too late so you need to get moving quick or you've lost all that data Mm -hmm. um cool so talking about just general business and branding and competitive Mm -hmm. positioning and you know very business studies gcse Mm -hmm. um What kind of things can businesses do to refine what they're doing, how they're seen by the world, talking about, you know, unique selling points and stuff like that? What what do you think they should look at? Yeah, obviously starting with a unique selling point is always the the, the, the first point where you should start Um, because if you're not unique, you know, um, I I, I love um, um, to listen to Seth Godin who, when he's talking about marketing, um, there was a book if I can remember his talk target um, it's like purple cow I think okay. it was called purple cow yeah it's basically based on the concept like you know if you join past the farm and you see cows you know you're just gonna drive past but if you see a purple cow it's gonna make you stop and want to look because you don't see a purple cow so you, there has to be something unique about your business and and a lot of, I know when businesses start sometimes they, they they don't really have time to think about it much because it started off a passion, it started off something I'm interested in. I love, I love making clothes and, you know, and I do it. Yeah, great. And you get your first 2% customers, you know, or your, you know, or your first 10% who just get it, you know. Um, so, 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 yes, it's great uh, to reach that level. But if you want to scale, if you want to hit ma- mass market success, there has to be something unique about you. Um, and so look really analyzing and sitting down and think, asking yourself what's my unique set point, what's unique about me and it could be in anything from your service, design, every, everything like you know um, so it's really looking about what, what I'm building to make the customers know okay yeah this is, this is um, I said this is me um, this is my company. This is not just like any other shoe. You know, you're trying to be Nike. You try to be, um, um, as I said, you're trying to be Adidas or whoever. You're trying to really be a unique brand. People recognize. So this is this is quite important. Actually, something which is interesting for where the world is going when we're thinking about it, um, with um, with all the Amazon um, Alexa and everything else coming out, Google Echo. We're going into a time where people are going to actually be ordering things, not in Google, Google in like our oh, solicitors in Birmingham, but they're going to want to say, okay, I want to speak to Antonio or call Antonio. So if you're not unique, if people don't know who you are really, you know, um, and somebody and you have to be under, um, yeah, please connect me to a solicitor, there's only going to be one 
<laughs> one solution Alexa is going to provide. You see, so yeah. so so the, the game there also, if you're not unique, it's really going to be tricky and difficult to win more business. So your unique selling point definitely is something to look into. Um, your SWOT analysis, I would say, reviewed on a regular basis. I would say yearly, but everybody can do it in their own, in, on their own um, um, how they believe is ideal for their business. Because what the SWOT analysis really does for you is this, um, the first thing obviously recognizes your weaknesses, which is key because where you're weak, you have to implement solutions, get support. Um, should it be hiring somebody to come in, hiring um, a, a partner, or so whatever you want to put in place to deal with the weakness, you cannot ignore it. You need, you need to recognize. You have to um, basically um, recognize that you have a weakness. You know, um, it's not. There's no problem about having a weakness, but um, then what do you do against it? How are you going to make yourself stronger? Uh, and then obviously the opportunities, amazing. You need to know what opportunities are out there. Where you're going to expand? Where you're going to go um, moving forward? And then. The threats, like we had with COVID coming, we, we, we learned now that anything can happen. There's, there's like, been a lot of threats in the threats economy. We can, these this, this yeah. days, I think, I, think, I think actually what the last few years has done, it has kind of woken up people to really start taking this theory um, um, seriously in terms of, okay, yes, the threat which can come around the corner at any time or point. Should it be government regulation? Should it be, in, like as I said, we had COVID lately, we had Brexit changing, we have the the strikes, the economic, which like instantly, as I said, you, you, you are planning to ship and your 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 um, delivery partner says we can't ship anymore. You know, all these are threats to your businesses. You kind of have to really try to have contingency plans for you know, um, and really like have a, you know, where you say, okay, you know what, how do I gonna, my business gonna con continue to trade um, if, if, if any of these threats happens or, you know, um, so this is definitely, um, this is definitely one of the key areas, I would say, the people, businesses, uh, their business foundations, like fu fundamentals, but a lot of businesses don't pay attention to it. Sometimes you realize people, because it's understandable, we're busy, you're running around. But you just, it just kind of snowballs. Snowballs, yeah, because exactly. You start exactly. doing your thing, and then you get customers pulling you one way, and suppliers pulling you another, and then a new platform. And, exactly. And, be and before long, yeah, you've not, you've not kind of done your homework, mm -hmm. um, which can be a bit dangerous. And I guess the thing is with a lot of those threats, which they are definitely there, and you do really need to think about them, is that they can be opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. So the companies that were the quickest to react during COVID probably mm -hmm. did pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, the ones with the couriers, you've got different couriers out there, they mm -hmm. can carry on, whereas another brand might have struggled. Mm -hmm. Same with Brexit, if you've sorted out your Brexit situation, it's not really a problem to you. Mm -hmm. If only you know, 39% of people are shipping internationally, 70% are not, that's a big opportunity for you to do, do it. it. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we have things like fires and floods and stuff, exactly. which to a degree maybe you can mitigate, maybe you can't. But exactly. what have you got to plan against that? You know, it, it could and will affect your competitors at some point as much as it's a risk to you. Mm -hmm. You know, are you always ready to not put down on them, but just as in to, to make an opportunity if suddenly the stock dries up from a certain supplier? Mm -hmm. This is in particular for like Amazon and things. In, you know, if a supplier suddenly runs out of stock, mm -hmm. or they had the... Um, the ship that got stuck in the Panama Canal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, you know, the global supply <laughs> thing ground to a halt. All yeah. of that stock so that obvious. was stuck behind it. Yeah. You yeah. know, if you had maybe a little bit extra capacity, mm -hmm. you were going to ride that out a lot better when everybody else's listings would start drying up. Yeah, again, this is perfect if you're tying it also to your competitor analysis and, and your... Um, because people just seem to see, see competi competition as bad. But to be honest, we believe that competition is actually great. Because number one, it gives you opportunity to do really benchmarking, benchmarking where you actually like see okay, um, where, who do I compare myself with, and how do they operate, and if you can benchmark yourself against great competitors, and you can learn what's good, what we're doing good, where you want to do the same, and you can see what they're actually doing bad, where you can do better. It's an amazing, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing to do. It helps you actually improve your own business and your own business processes. Um, I always say people who are very afraid of competition. Uh, if you don't feel like I can't, you, you're not unique, you don't have a unique selling point. You know, again, going back to it, if you don't have a unique selling point, 
obviously I'm going to have to be worried about competition a lot because we are going to get outcompeted on price. I want to fight on price. And as I said, a race on price is never a good race because no, a race, it's not only a race to the bottom. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's, it's, you have to be unique. Look at your competitors um, and analyze what's actually great about them, which you can maybe learn from and what's bad, where you can improve on yourself, um, So which is, which is great. And with, as I said, with competition always, if, I said, I said the market is never too full. You can always expand the pie, make it bigger, you know, yeah. by innovate, by changing something to kind of like, okay, now I cannot just kick it. Like, say, for example, when Chimsha came in and first it was just doing male um, outfits and then they decided to do, okay, let's go into female and that actually expanded the business quite big. If they would have just stayed focused in the male and compete in the male aspect, they would have never become the big Chimsha there today. So they had to kind of expand the pie so they can expand the business. Yeah. So, um, but so all this... Obviously, that's a business fundamentals. Uh, it's really, really impo important. I'm a, I'm a sports guy. You know, I play basketball. And one thing I said, my coach always said, is always in the fundamentals. We all do the same drills, but how often do I do it makes a difference to, you know what I mean, how good I become. How often do I shoot, take the shot? How often do we all do the same drills? But it's just the difference is how often do I do it? Yeah. Um, so, so how often do I do my competitive analysis? How often do I do look at my USP and maybe, you know, just because I'm unique today doesn't mean I'm going to be unique tomorrow because there's, the market is moving forward. People, new, new people are entering the market. Somebody looked at what you were doing yesterday and tried to improve it today. So somebody's going to come to the market and do something better than you were doing yesterday. So now you have to evolve. Um, innovate in your unique selling point. So it's it's all these all these areas where we say in business um, you, you have to constantly look at. I think, like you say, it's, it, it can be quite a good thing when competitors come in, maybe they bring in a new product. If they expand the market that you're in, as long as you can react to it, they've made your pie bigger. Mm -hmm. So that's good. The ultimate, I guess, example of sort of being, looking at your competitors is like Apple, mm -hmm. who rarely, if ever, really have created a solely new product. They've just kind of waited until they think they've got the right offering and although there's debates as to whether Apple's the best or not, they mm -hmm. certainly, well, they've become like the most valuable company in the world by always looking at, well, what are the products out there that are, you know, interesting, mm -hmm. be it MP3 players or little tablets, mm -hmm. whatever, but they weren't quite right, were they? Mm -hmm. They were slow or buggy or ugly or not connected to an app or whatever. And then have created a new thing and made a whole new pie. So whereas the MP3 market might have been, you know, this big and now it's that big. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for everything, isn't it? You know, be it cosmetics and fashion and people find a niche and then just enlarge it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the other thing is once you get to a certain level, uh, it's the, the sort of likened to like a castle. You want to build a moat around your business. Because mm -hmm. um, although you want to get to that next level, mm -hmm. you've got to make sure you protect what you've got. So it's things like having your own data, mm -hmm. um, your own, you know, branded products, having the right supply chain, again, SWOT analysis, have you got um, backup suppliers, backup factories to get it from, maybe even different parts of the world. Certainly when COVID was happening, I remember people were bouncing all over the world from different suppliers until they were getting locked down. So it was China, and then it was like Philippines and Vietnam, then mm -hmm. Mexico, and then COVID was bouncing around with it. But um, yeah, you just got to keep, keep an eye on it. Mm. So we talked about everyone doing it themselves, mm -hmm. sitting there in front of their computer, doing their SWOT analysis and their USPs and speaking to suppliers and things. Uh, the big elephant in the room, the big pink, pink elephant, mm -hmm. is uh, AI. Mm -hmm. It's been an interesting year. I think ChatGPT will be coming up to nearly a year old. Mm -hmm. Not sure how that's played out over the period of a year. There's automations coming out everywhere. Mm -hmm. All of the big automation apps, so Zapier and things are now getting AI put into them. Mm. What's your take on AI and where it's going and how it might benefit businesses or not? <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a, that's a good question um, because, let me start this way, as consultants, we our job as consultants are to research and have solutions in place before the clients need it. So we need to be really, majority of our time is actually we doing the research work, looking into things, putting solutions, validating them, you know, you know, in all kind of areas before. So when a client calls and they have a problem or they, they need a solution, 
we can provide to them quickly in a timely manner to the cost they, they require to be and you know really understand this so it saves the client time and money in order you know because as I said they might not have necessarily the time to go deep dive and everything else and AI has been one of the areas where we started our consortium started heavily looking into and it's one thing where we really firmly believe AI at the moment is like in the stage where Google was when it just came out and it's just gonna get bigger um, from all technologies which have changed um, who have changed the world like the change of e-commerce business and all this kind of stuff AI is definitely among the, the top ones I uh, would definitely say the top five um, you know Google changed Amazon changed the world in, in how e-commerce is AI is is here is here not to, is here to stay and it's gonna change the same way it's already changing and it's having a fast impact already in terms of how people operate I think for specifically for smaller businesses like is a great thing which has happened because if I know how to use it correctly it can allow me to compete with a bigger, bigger business on less resources I said because a lot of these platforms are I said less costly um, than, than hiring an additional person which you might not have the budget to do anyway in the first place mm -hmm. um, you can nowadays using JTP alone as example you can create blogs quicker you can create marketing campaigns quicker, you can create email campaigns quicker, you can finish work, like things will take you three, four hours, you might do it an hour, an hour and a half now, so freeing up some time for you to actually focus on working on your business than in your business. Um, one thing for what we're recommending to clients, a lot of the clients we're going for is AI specifically in process automation, okay, because if there's something which a, 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 a staff member does on a regular basis, it can get automated using a autom like a, a smart bot or something who can actually execute and execute on it and learn actually as ex executing on ways to probably improve it or make it better or if there's any mistakes and and most likely the bot might not even do any mistake because it's programmed to do you know what I mean a human human might actually have a higher uh, higher risk of doing a mistake than the bot is it frees up human capital um, I believe we're going to a world where as human will be doing things which are more creative um, so when 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 you have AI doing certain tasks which a human person shouldn't really be doing anymore today in, in today's world if we recommend it frees up that human to actually focus on key areas in a business like I can actually talk to a customer longer. Mm -hmm. um, again, one of the my favorite talks I listened to to uh, Jim Ron was about time management, and on that talk he was talking about majors and minors. So understanding because a lot of businesses put major time into minor tasks. Understanding what are your major tasks and what are your minor tasks because and allocating major time to major task and minor time to minor task to make your business operate more effectively. And AI is basically one of the tools we can help you do that in, in a much more efficient ways. Like, you know, all these minor tasks, a human person should be spending time on it, get an AI bot or something, an AI system to execute on it quicker. Um, but then the major task itself, this is where, as I said, spending more time with the client actually building a report. You know, so the client come back because as people will buy from people. Mm -hmm. This is much more important. Solving a client's problem, like paying time to solve a client's problem, actually so that the client feel like, oh my days, I'm never going to move away from this person in price because because as I said I have a relationship to Ben you know I have a he's he it's Ben who solved my problem when it came to so these are the things where which makes a difference in a business and 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 for me every company should start looking into a AI strategy we're hoping to release a framework which should allow client customers to kind of like really use when deciding how I can implement AI in what areas in my business based on what my goals are in, uh, in the future. So it's something we're working on at the moment. However, um, as I would say, every business should right now consider having at least a basic AI strategy. I would say at least chat GPT, like, uh, um, like every business should at least start getting users to use that to kind of like getting understand when the other systems are coming into place because Jet GPT might be the big one people know about, but it's not the only one, and it's not yeah. even the most advanced one. You know, so it's like there's a lot of other tools out there, a lot of other great, um, great um, things you can use, which can just really speed up the way you're doing business. Um, so, so, but I would say definitely look at the basic ones already. You might want to start implementing, but try to have somebody in the team, I don't know, a guy who's responsible for innovation or your CTO, whoever, to really kind of focus into looking 
into it right now and spending some time each week or something really figuring out, okay, can we develop a strategy for us to start implementing AI in our future to make ourselves more effective, get rid of mistakes, automate processes, operate faster, because as I said, your competitors will use it. Yeah. Now, if you, if, if you stay behind, if you join late, you'll be behind. Like, you know, you don't want to have it again like, like a lot of people missed uh, when Google AdWords was very cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> so Amazon. I remember Google. when it was free. Yeah, exactly. So you know, a lot of people like you know missed that boat. You don't want to miss that boat again and mm -hmm. come in later when it start becoming actually more expensive to integrate. Like start looking into it now because it's definitely here to stay. And I think it's a great tool. As much as it presents dangers in other areas, it's a great tool for me as a business to look into and really start implementing in order to help my business grow. Because as I said, the dangers will not stop it from growing, and it will it will it will it will grow and it will become sex, it will make an impact in this world. It's interesting. I think um, a lot of people probably tried ChatGPT, which has changed a lot over the past year. To be honest, it's probably got worse, but um, that's partly just because they've added more safeguards and things. Mm -hmm. um, and personally, I don't know if you've used Claude, Claude AI. I know, I haven't heard it's, that um, already, but... Similar to ChatGPT, it doesn't really do the coding side, but it does the text and seems to do a much better uh, result. And then there's Perplexity, which is like a search mm -hmm. engine. Yeah. That's really good. Um, just tells you the exact what you want instead of having to go on everyone's websites. What I think uh, I've experimented with and I've seen a few people find quite well is speaking to chat GPT or similar and asking them or it for ideas on how to automate your business. Mm. So don't just think of it as like oh, it's going to write text and then it's going to look the same as everybody else's text, which I think a lot of people have experimented with and some sticking with it, but it's still fairly basic. Um, but yeah, asking AI what it would... It, um, automate because obviously AI is AI and it's got a lot more ideas than yeah. you do and then kind of delving into that and then thinking okay well that is a good idea and then I'll investigate further how and what and where and say a lot of the, the good AI tools now you've kind of got to build your own but you're linking into that power yeah. of what they can do um, but yeah, yeah just ask AI what it, what it would recommend I agree, I, agree. Um, I, I don't know how much multiple IQ it has to Einstein, but it has like you have to understand that it's see there's another human being who is very intelligent who has access to a lot of data. Okay, so if I treat it that way, I know that I, and I learn how to communicate to it. I said it's not just to writing text, but also to bounce off to to kind of like um, why I like to use AI with us Chat GPT for example is to kind of like bounce my own ideas to evolve my ideas quicker so I can communicate to it in a sense of like say for example okay um, I want to design so I want to create something so I can ask it questions which based on the answers it will give me prompts and other prompts to, to develop my own idea further you yeah. see so I, I fully agree with this so it's, it's not just a matter of like telling to write this text or create this but you can actually help it to in a faster way to kind of ev um, develop your own idea into something to make whatever you're trying to work on or whatever you're trying to create or build actually better and faster because it's provided you data and if you because you have your own knowledge on top which you build on top of it and then it might give another prompt actually to go into deeper and then before you have at the end then you have this end result which is like okay yeah exactly this is what I've been looking for and you can do it the great thing is you can do it now at much, much faster speed, like, you know, uh, and then they may be using even Google and researching and reading, you know. Um, so, so yeah, it, 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 it is definitely um, amazing, as I said, amazing tools for SMEs now to kind of use on a day-to-day -to -day basis, not just to carry on tasks, as, I said, as, you, got, as you said, to, to maybe even feed off, you know, um, like back and forth in terms of like really develop your own research into something and your own idea into something. Yeah, that, uh, I fully agree on that. I think um, it's this sort of the old saying of you don't know what you don't know. Mm. So a lot of the time we can come up with an idea, a process, but we don't even know what technology would you use that for, then who are the technology providers and what mm. do you need to think about. Um, yeah, I think of it, ChatGPT exactly the same. It's almost like, um, you know, if you ever go to like a networking event or you go and visit your nephew and then some of these people who are just like so interested in one topic and suddenly you're just talking to them and like ideas are bouncing off constantly and you're like, oh my God, I wish I'd met you three years ago. You know everything I need to know about such and such. That's where it could be really good because you could just sort of yeah, say, spit out an idea. What do I need to consider? Who's the competitors in that space? Why are they good? Why are they popular? And then you just kind of delve into it and you go down a rabbit hole, don't you? Mm -hmm. 
And then at the end of it, what also works quite nice is saying, okay, well, everything we've talked about, I want to turn that into a business or a product. Can you make me a specification which is based on everything we talked about? And it will come back and say, you know, these were the five top USPs from these brands. These are where they're weak. I recommend you do this. And then you've kind of at least got like a framework mm -hmm. that you can then build upon and then and then do. Mm. Um, and yeah, you're talking about the back-end automation. Mm -hmm. I think that's still pretty new for most people. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's obviously a clear opportunity to, I guess, push yourself further, faster amongst whatever else. While everyone else is still using it for writing blogs and social media posts and things, you know. Yeah. And you want to you think about where you can save time. Just one, just one of the clients we're working together with on this, as I was say, um, out there, um, one of the clients we're working together with on this, as I said, with this process automation and, uh, and, and, and AI bots and stuff like this, I said, um, we currently we work in, in implementing it in business such as Idea Bathrooms um, and a few other actually big names out there who, 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 who are already jumping onto it quite quickly. So you can see that with the bigger clients, um, with the bigger clients that they are trying to adopt it quick because they understand being first sometimes is better than being best. You know, sometimes you just want to be first and it makes, it makes such a big difference to business just by being first because as I said, you can, um, even though mistakes might happen along the way or something, you're still learning, but it allows you to move quicker than your competitors and, and capture probably a piece of a market uh, before your competitors can or before it's gone. So there's that, that early, you know, the low hanging fruit and put it where everything which early you can just grab, you're probably the first one to grab it um, because you are, it allows you to operate faster, better, less mistakes, you know what I mean, more cost effective, whatever it does. So, so it's definitely something bigger companies are moving on quick, quickly. Um, I'm thinking moving at a faster speed than we probably even expected. Um, so it's definitely something I think it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna take off. It's gonna take off quite quickly. And in in the, in the next couple of five years, in my prediction, next five years, most businesses or most top competing businesses will be having this aspect of AI in their business. Um, as I said, it, it's it, you can see the the the, the, the generation now that. that the businesses now they can see the value a lot of business they can see the value on it and once your competitors start doing it and you start seeing it you 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 want to go on it as well because you're going to see how it's it might allow you to be more competitive than yourself so so instead of waiting just look start looking into it yourself so so definitely um and that's one 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 thing we we'll definitely think like it's going to grow quite fast i've no doubt so just to sort of wrap it off uh, i believe there's a report coming out about aliens there's been loads of um Seminars and they don't call them hearings in America, where all the all of the um, all of the stuff about aliens is supposedly going to come out. <laughs> so it's just maybe you put this in your SWOT analysis, mm -hmm. you know, threats so. or opportunities. opportunities yeah. yeah, like would you be like welcoming the alien overlords? Or, you know? Um, so so me personally, I don't think I'm in our company. I'm the consultant specialized in that area alien once we're still looking for probably one <laughs> we're going to be the first one <laughs> to look into the aliens um, I, I, I used to think that we would be the first one to go meet them obviously if Elon Musk managed to send his um, his, his um, yeah. record up there I mean with everything but if they get here first yeah I, I think um, I think obviously we might not know enough to kind of like know um, uh, um, what product to offer to them or how to expand our e-commerce. Yeah, I'm not sure. But then, <laughs> but, um, I mean, if you go to our previous, um, we did some movie research like E.T. and, um, you know, and um, so I think from, if, if I look at E.T. as a movie, I believe um, yeah, they might be friendly and we might be able to do some business with them. <laughs> so That's so start looking into maybe alien heads. I, um, need, I need to look into see which courier uh, <laughs> travels to Amazon, Amazon definitely will have something, Amazon. I think. Amazon, I think if... Um, well, yeah, they they got the space, no, <laughs> they have the space title, so I think, I think they might be doing something. As long as you don't mind waiting about 100 light years for your parcel, then... <laughs> to, get, to get there, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Yeah, I, I think, I think um, it's, if, 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 aliens, um, if aliens turn up, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, it's a way, as I said, to expand the pie, expand the market. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> well, exactly. then, yeah, you got more customers to sell to. Forget, Just figure forget out Germany, US, you got the universe. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thanks very much for your um, very detailed insights and things. Do you want to give your website addresses, how they can find you? Um, yes. Uh, basically, the company is called Bisc Group uh, Limited. So our website, as I said in the name, is www.biscgroup.co.uk. 
um, BIS group basically spelled B I S C. Um, so BIS group, LinkedIn, I hope um, they're going to be probably linked somewhere. Sure, that'll make it be. easier. Uh, LinkedIn under Antonio, Antonio Mancul is my, my LinkedIn directly if you want to reach out. Um, yeah, so you can reach out to me per LinkedIn, per our website, per email. I'm sure, there's going to be the links there. Uh, we're here to help. Um, like I said, it's free to have a call with us. So don't don't think that okay, consultants are gonna charge me for the first call. No, it doesn't work like this. A lot of people think as consultants like we just give advice. No, we are actually practitioners. So we proud pride ourselves in being practitioners in the field. So the if we have any problems or solution, we don't just advise you on how to get it solved. If you need support in actually implementing the solution, we can do that. We have a number of partners we already worked with. We not, as I said, we do the research for you before you need a problem based on obviously all the clients we work with and we understand how to do a research on the market, where the market is going, and we try to be prepared for the problems which are coming. So by the time that you have the problem and you call us, we can implement a solution or provide you with a solution as quickly as possible, um, obviously saving you time and money. So in that note, and yeah, and we're not as expensive as people think when you think of consultants, you know. Um, so reach out, have a free conversation with us, and then, yeah, and then hopefully we have a chat. The universe is your oyster. That, that phrase? The universe is your opportunity. Uh, yeah. We tried. Yeah. We tried. And I should have looked up space related ponds. Um, cool. Thanks very much. And I look forward to seeing everybody on episode 12, which is coming out soon, which as well. See you next time.